A Fox News alert, and uh, you're looking at Jen Psaki, the U.S. State Department spokeswoman. She says she cannot confirm or rule out the fact that U.S. citizens were on board that downed German Wings aircraft uh, that went down in the mountains of France on that flight from Barcelona to Dusseldorf. When, uh, if and when we get more information about the nationalities of those on board, we will certainly bring it to you. In the meantime, the debris field reportedly spread over nearly a mile area. Researchers are now working to try to recover the wreckage and victims as well. Um, the weather is hampering their efforts. That jet was operated by German wings. It is a lower cost subsidiary of Lufthansa en route to Dusseldorf from Barcelona, Spain when it began to lose altitude. Let's bring in aviation expert Oliver McGee, an aerospace mechanical and civil engineer. He was also Deputy Assistant Secretary of Transportation for Technology Policy and advised the White House in that role. Thanks very much for bringing your expertise to this discussion. I'm just astounded in looking at the track of this plane, uh, and perhaps we can put up a graphic that shows what happened to it just after it reached altitude 38,000 feet. Um, it began what looks like a very controlled descent, a steep one, maybe 3,000 feet a minute. That's the blue line that, that is not so clear on our screen, um, but that is, it's a little bit hard to read against the blue background, but that, but that descent suggests that they had no power, no ability to bring the nose up, and I don't, as far as I can tell from the track of the plane, I, I don't see that the pilots initiated any kind of a turn at all. What does that say to you? Well, um, it says that the crisis inside the cockpit was no crisis at all. It was rather, rather calm. But there might have been some type of emergency, um, I would say catastrophic type of event, maybe smoke or a malfunction of uh, instrumentation inside the cockpit that required air traffic control to uh, allow the rapid descent. And the pilots uh, seem to be uh, doing the, the old adage of aviating and navigating the aircraft, right. but not necessarily doing as much communication. They're trying to get control of the aircraft. If there's a and then when it, when it got close to the mountain, that's when it got catastrophic. If there is a problem on board, you aviate first, meaning you fly the airplane, then you navigate, you figure out which direction you want to go, and finally, the last thing you do is communicate. So the fact that the pilots didn't apparently call the ground uh, might make some sense, but it, it just astounds me that there were no attempts at a turn or anything like that. As far as we can tell, this, this plane was operating apparently fine at cruising altitude and then just all of a sudden began to dive. Yeah, that's very surprising to me as well as I was studying through much of the media reports. And uh, everyone now has become great experts in uh, air traffic investigations given the many incidents we had this year. So until we get the black boxes and then get to know what's going on in those, in, inside that cockpit through those flight recorders, that's the true facts, that's the true evidence, the chain of evidence that we need to find out exactly what was going on in this uh, slight mystery of why this plane uh, descended uh, controlled um, but slowly, but then all of a sudden it ran into the Alps, and that's really uh, baffling to everyone. I had talked in our earlier hour about an airworthiness directive that was issued by the Federal Aviation Administration back in December. It was actually based on one that came out of Europe, and apparently an airline flying in Europe had problems with the angle of attack indicators, which for our viewers tell the uh, airplane, you know, whether it's whether its nose is pointed up or down, uh, those were freezing up. Ground crews would wash the planes. The angle of attack indicators would get some water in them that would freeze at altitude. And in one circumstance, they, they caused the um, automatic control, the flight control system on that plane, to go into a nose-down attitude, drop 3,000 feet per minute, and, and the flight control, I'm sorry, the flight crew, could not override it. They eventually were able to, and everything uh, came out okay in that particular flight. Uh, but the FAA has told all the airlines to check virtually every Airbus for that problem. Uh, is that something they'll be looking at? Oh, definitely. And I think the black box conversations will reveal that excellent analysis that you gave. That could be a potential problem here because um, you, this looks like a uh, cockpit that was kind of in a slight um, uh, crisis mode, but at the same time, it was going down in controlled descent. 
but uh, it looks like uh, control, controllability and uh, some of the things that you're talking about, angle of attack, could have been a concern here yeah. because uh, there was no design, uh, no, no, no path of pulling up and, and avoiding the mountain. And that's usually uh, uh, says that there's a malfunction going on inside there. Oliver but that McGee. Black box will black box will reveal a lot for us. Oliver McGee is an aviation expert and aerospace engineer. Thank you.